Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody's had a wonderful week. Coming to you live from Martha's Vineyard. Today we're making stuffed peppers with a Turkish theme. But as always, we'll dance around the different countries. What do you think of that, Mrs. Spielberg? Sounds great. Wait there, Mrs. Spielberg. You're not enjoying my dance. Well, if I start dancing, then it's going to go this way. <laughs> we're having a lovely red wine today, aren't we? We are. We seem to be, you know, I've noticed as it's coming to fall, we're having more red wine than we... Um, we were having champagne in the summer, wasn't we? Yeah. This is a nice, I really like this one. It's got a great body to it. Highly recommend this for everyone. We had this uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, but we had the 2010. This one's the 2009. 2009. It's lost a year. I feel like myself. <laughs> I feel that way. Cheers, everybody. Happy Sunday. How's everybody feeling? What's everybody been cooking this week? That's what I want to know to you. And also, what are you thankful for? That's the big question, because gratitude is important. Uh, I know that Joanne, uh, I believe her name is Fiume, she already made the peppers, which is pretty cool. Oh, well done. She well done. Uh, got the recipe as it comes out on Tuesdays, and she's already made it, which is awesome. Well done. Uh, our friends as well, uh, Heath and John, Heath made them last night and she shared some beautiful photos. Uh, it looked really good. She said she enjoyed all the flavours that they were spot on. So that's nice to hear. Um, we'll talk about flavours and how you can add more character to this or you can take it to a, a count, different country where today. The basic concept is this stuffed pepper and it's something we see in, uh, you know, um, we're going to go towards Turkey, but it's something we see in many different countries. You know, India, Mexico, Chile, Reno, is, uh, where, where, when we see um, the lights of um, Poland, we see it in all these different countries. So today we're going to focus on Turkey. Um, you know, yellow onions are the most popular onion that we see, or we might call them Spanish onions. One of the things I always say, onions, are, you know, when you look at an onion, Mr. Spielberg, see the way it's papery? See the way it's papery? Yep. Peeling it's a rascal. So a lot of people, they, they struggle with an onion to peel it. So what I want to do is actually take the onion, put it in some water for five minutes. This softens the skin. So now that we've softened the skin, I'll just move this to one side for a second. I'm going to take this and I'm going to dry it. And I'm going to, now watch how easy the skin comes off now. Just because we've placed it in, you know, you can see, I'm using a small knife. A lot of people will use the fingers and then your fingers smell all oniony, don't they? It's like, ugh. I think I was calling you Onion Man earlier this week because you kind of stunk of onions. <laughs> I was working on a caramelized onion recipe and, uh, you know, during the week we're always developing recipes. So I went through pounds and pounds of onion and when I seen Mrs. Spielberg later on that evening, she said to me, I smell like a, a, a New York hot dog vendor. I was thinking about just locking the doors. Just take a look at this, look. Just please, this is how easy, you know, if you just take the, if you just use the, the knife just to pull it, can you see that? And see the way it comes off in one piece. See the way it's peeling just beautifully. So yep. just by soaking the onion ahead of time, it's much easier. I'm using my small purring knife just to grab the skin. And it's a good little tip, you know, it's a good tip to help you peel them. Otherwise you're gonna be there for quite a bit of time just peeling these and now it comes off with one piece. I'm keeping a nice clean board. I'm not worried about onion going all over the place. Kathy was saying that you could have a new scent, a uh, day onion, <laughs> which I like. And well, then I got another request just to show the label of the wine. Yeah, so I'm just gonna it wouldn't be good if it was going out on a date with Dracula, would it? No, uh, what are you uh, saying? Uh, <laughs> uh, the onion. <laughs> um, as always, we always say a nice sharp knife we use the Victorian Ox. I know I'm going to say it, and every week I say it, I don't even know what I have to say. No, anymore. please don't say okay. it. <laughs> Always nice and sharp. With the onion, when we come to the dice, Mr. Spielberg, we come across, we're coming down the onion, so we're just chopping down. And you know, having a sharp knife really helps this. Yeah. Would your tip about the onions also, uh, also work for garlic? I forgot, yeah, sure it would, yeah, but I'll show you how to just chop a piece of garlic in a second. But it would, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you know, I've never really tried that. 
So it's going to be a learning for us. Well, we'll, we'll take a piece of garlic now and put it into the water. Well, let's try it. How about that? Who, whose idea is this? It's a live tip. Well, I just missed the name. Yes. But. Well, um, so I'm just dicing the onion. It doesn't have to be frightfully small. You know, just coming across this side, uh, coming down the sides of the onion. Now, yellow onion is the largest of the crops here around the world. You know, you see, um, mainly, you know, like in the United States, it's always going to be the cheapest one. If you've got red onion at home, feel free to use it. If you've got shallots, use that. But, you know, uh, one of the things I love about stuffed peppers or stuffed tomatoes, anything like that, is that you can have any morsels in your fridge. You can get creative, which we'll talk about in a moment. So we're just putting down the onion and then we're just stuffing it. I'm going to put a pan on it, uh, a medium heat, to start cooking these. So we're just dicing the onion. We got um, a nice comment that uh, the tip to get that spatzel maker was really helpful and they, uh, we had a viewer make the spatzel. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, um, I've seen some photographs of some of the viewers have made the spatzel. So, well done. Um, you know, I think the spatzel is it's something that you, you know, feel free to make some bolognese, roasted vegetables. And as, as we talked about before, it freezes really well. And it's, um, it's easier to make than um, a pasta. And it's, um, it's got a lot of flavor to it and people love it. I think it's something you can teach your grandchildren. People cetera. have said that the green layer of the onion isn't bitter and so it, so it has to be removed. Uh, the, the, the green layer of the which, sorry? Of the onion, usually. Uh, if it's sprouting out the green, yeah, that, if you've got the green coming out, if it's sprouting out, it's an older onion, um, and you want to always pull that, and it's the same with the garlic as well, if the garlic starts to sprout out. As we're talking now, I'm just going to put this put this on medium-high frying pan, Mrs. Spielberg. I'm coming yeah. in. You come on in. I'm going to add some olive oil. You know, when we use olive oil, we always want to be using a light olive oil for cooking, and then we use our extra virgin olive oils for finishing they're the fruity so we get that nice first press that nice rich grassiness and fruitiness to it um so i'm going to add um sorry i put the wrong one on my right, of this stove it's it's always uh always gets the better of me every week there's going to be one in about four years time <laughs> Oh gosh, I just snorted. You did loud. snort it oh, like really God. loudly. <laughs> <laughs> like even loudly oh, for me. I've only had one sip of wine. I know. I'm, I'm adding the onions to the pan, medium high. Um, I will eventually just buy another stove, I think. I think um, that's a great idea. No, come on now. I like stoving with it. Okay, I've got some tomato sauce there. What size frying pan are we uh, using? This is about an 11 and a half inch frying pan. Um, I really like the Teflon. I have to say. Tefal? Tefal, sorry, yeah. Uh, Tefal. I really like it. Um, I, I don't wear for the man in the room. Oh, no. Well, Doug's going to have to drink again. Doug was asking if an olive is, is a fruit. <laughs> is an olive a fruit? Uh, an olive is a fruit because it's got a seed on there, yes. Okay. So it's going to be a, a fruit. Um, so, um, which is interesting is because you get oil from a fruit, um, but olive is a fruit. Um, we're going to start to cook and show a little bit more oil, it's a little bit dry. You know, you always want to make sure that you've got enough oil. Usually I'll, usually for an onion like that, two tablespoons of oil. Uh, we want enough fat in there, otherwise it's going to just sweat the onion, the moisture is just going to sweat. Let's go back over to the actual, uh, to the countertop. So, um, with the peppers, um, when we think about peppers, Green peppers are always going to be the, uh, they're always going to have that grassy flavor. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. We didn't even cheers. Hold cheers. on. Oh yeah, cheers by Joe. We're getting stuck. We're making stuffed peppers straight away. Come on. Oh, Martha's going to make the peppers tonight. Oh, well done. Thank you. Thank She's you. got the ground lamb, so that's oh, great. Oh, good. Yeah, the lamb. We're going to do two variations today. Okay, so when it comes to stuffing peppers, um, small purring knife, um, some people just whiz off the top. Whizzing it off, I've never yeah. heard that term. I, <laughs> that must be British. It, it must be a British or chop off, off with his head. Perfect. We've started watching that crown, haven't we? I love yeah. the crown. Yeah, it's a great show. Um, we should start some Season four really. starts tonight and no, we do not work for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, coming around the top. Okay, so we're just extracting this out mm -hmm. and then we're just going to slice that Mr. Spielberg. See, so slicing the top. Yeah. Any excess seeds, you can just 
take them and just give them a little tap over here. Sandy was saying that she loves the wine glasses. These were given as a gift from my dad and my stepmom. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, really wonderful. Thank you, Rick and Mary. That's their names, by the way. <laughs> just in case you were wondering who Rick and Mary is, I thought you were in case you the wine glasses. Okay, look, I just want to show you again. Um, I found by putting the, cutting it this way, Mrs. Spielberg, with a small paring knife, sharp knife as always, guys. We always have our nice sharp knife, okay? Coming around here. So just coming around. And I find this really helps, um, helps it stay inside. If you whiz the top off, I find sometimes it can fall apart. So we're just gonna bang off the excess seeds. So okay, now we've got that on the go and I'm just gonna chop this part off here. And um, I always find it's quite nice. You don't really need to save these, by the way. But it's just, it's sort of something I always seem to do. I don't know why, but I always do. Um, so the onion, Mrs. Spielberg, we've got our peppers ready. Um, now, we're using a coloured peppers today. Red peppers are related to green pepper. A green pepper will go red. Orange and yellow are actually different variety of pepper. Um, when we use the red, the orange and the yellow, they're always going to be sweeter. You know, when we think about greener peppers, they're going to have that more grassy feeling to it. So I quite like the, um, the, the coloured peppers. I think they're quite nice. I think so too. Okay. Look at that. So, Wait, so what did you say? Why did you keep the top? Um, I, I, you know, I just usually just for presentation oh, purposes. I, see. I don't really eat them. You can have it if you want, <laughs> Lisa. Okay. Oh, thanks. I'm going to take some. Now, you could use any rice you wanted for this. I've got some basmati. So I'm going to take some water and I'm going to salt the water, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. A little bit of salt. Whenever we cook any grains, we always want to. While we're over here, we'll just. Toss over our onions. We're getting a little bit of colour on there. And whilst these are cooking, small amounts of salt. We use kosher salt for cooking, remember? And then we use um, kosher salt for cooking and then a more salt. salt for finishing. finishing. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while now, since <laughs> April. <laughs> I almost know what you're going to say See, before you I'm say it. Gentlemen, we make one of the parmesan and the game's <laughs> over for John. 13 years of the <laughs> Okay, salt. Um, so, Basmati rice, you could use a short grain rice with you. Um, a couple of mistakes I find that a lot of people do, um, I've seen when I've seen a lot of people making peppers, they have a tendency to um, not par cook the rice. Par cooking the rice is gonna um, make sure that it's, it's, it's cooked really well. Um, because the, the raw rice in there, we don't know if there's gonna be enough water content, although onions are gonna have quite a bit of, oh, it's just quite- it's, Oh my God. I'll turn, I'll turn the fan on. <laughs> I have one eye because I like the onions. Uh, we're adding some ground lamb. Okay, so I want to show you versatility with this as well. Now, when you add a ground meat, you always wanna chop the meat up, otherwise you're gonna make hamburger, you know, like a meatball or a hamburger. So we always wanna chop this up. Now, for instance, if you're vegetarian, you could use mushrooms, but you know, if you want, just don't just use a regular mushroom. It's time to sort of get creative. So we've got all different mushrooms. So when that's cooking for a second, this is on, that's on. Let's just come back over here, Mr. Spielberg. I just wanted to tell you that our friends from Australia are on, and I always appreciate, Charles, Charles. yeah, when they're on, um, it's always so nice because we know how early it is in Charles the morning. And yeah. I love, love, love Charles and Margaret. Look at the joy in my face. I miss you both. I can't wait for us to be back on the cruise. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles, if you've never met Charles, he's possibly, I think, the funniest, funniest crystal guest that I've ever met in my life. He has a book of jokes just stored, a file and cabinet. Amazing guests. We miss you guys and can't wait to be back on board with you. Um, mushrooms. We've got some oyster mushrooms and we've got some shiitakes. So let's just, I'm just going to add some mushrooms. I want to show you today, if it says lamb, happy days. If it says, you know, mushrooms, happy days, why not mix it, get creative. If you want to use turkey in this, Johnny Good, if you want to use some pork in there, Italian sausage, happy days. If you use 12 ounces of meat instead of 10 ounces of meat, don't worry. I said this last week and I'll say it again. Don't, please don't straightjacket a recipe. You know, when it comes to making recipes, it's about you seasoning to your taste. It's gonna be, this will allow, that one cup of rice will allow 
Now, peppers come in all different sizes. You can see here, we've got a bold bugger. Look at this, this fella's bold, and this one's slenderer. So <laughs> I actually, it's the, I just want to, this is me before COVID, and this is now. <laughs> I know you. I know you're all thinking. I can't wait to see it. Chef, chef John, I'm going to take some selfies with him. <laughs> I've noticed as I put weight on, more people are starting to trust me. I was a skinny chef at first. <laughs> oh, sausages! Oh, I can't wait to <laughs> and let's go back over. Um, so the lamb's, you know, we know lamb's going to have. It's going to have quite a bit of fat to it as well. So I'm going to add some mushrooms. So I'm just showing you, my whole goal of the show is to encourage you to get, um, to, to, but when you left that. Barbara Deal just said your new nickname is Mr. Giggle Snort. <laughs> and Doug's well on his way with the drinking because of the sausages and Doug, a bunch of stuff. Doug just, last week, Doug was hilarious. He was just unbelievable. Leslie believes that you should never trust a skinny chef, so I believe in that. And I want to give a shout out to Kathy Rappaport who asked, who cleans the stove? Because we can see that even though John talks about the splatter guards, <laughs> and hmm, I wonder who does clean the stove. Oh, I do. Um, so let's, this is cooking, Mrs. Spielberg. Let's come back over here. Um, you know, in the recipe, it says you can add some um, raisins to it. So I spilled some salt in there, so I dropped the onion. I told you, she, yes. Could you substitute um, cauliflower rice for the regular rice in yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, because you wouldn't, yeah, with the, with the cauliflower rice, you wouldn't have to blanch it off beforehand, because we know we just stick that in the food processor. So feel free to do that. If it's the frozen version, you know, you pre-frozen it, then you'd want to just defrost it. You know, you end up with more water content with that. You know, in the recipe it says golden raisins, but you could use some dried cranberries. Oh wait, show it again. I was so focused in on you. Um, you could use some, uh, it says some golden raisins. I, I spilled some salt by accident. Uh, you could use some cranberries in there. And I'm showing you just versatility. I really want you to get creative. Um, say for instance, if you've got some pine nuts, some walnuts, some pecans, you could throw some of those in there, you know. But not if you have a tree nut allergy. <laughs> no, not, no, certainly not. Um, you might have some, we made sticky toffee pudding several weeks ago. You may have some dates left over. We have them beautiful uh, dates. You might want to throw some of those in there. Uh -huh. So I'm just showing you trying to use up morsels. Now when we think about making these stuffed peppers, I'm just going to just stay there for a second. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that's tossed around. There was a question too that you'll have. We'll have to go back to later about the sticky toffee pudding. That someone had a question about it for making it for Thanksgiving, but yeah, it was. Sure, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to interrupt. Remind us at the end of the sticky yep. toffee pudding. Someone remind us. Okay, so I'm showing you versatility now. When it comes to spicing this, we're just going to go with. We're going to be using basic today, feta cheese and dill. But I do want to always encourage you to have fun. You know, when we think about you know, stuffed peppers, and we think about Turkey, we think, we think about the Middle East, we think about, you know, Syria, um, you know, all spice, wonderful, you know, Christopher Columbus made a mistake when he went, and he found this, he thought it was a peppercorn, and it's something that you could just add, so you can always add one teaspoon of spice to this recipe, so if you wanted to, feel free to add some spice, and when I say spice, I mean it, get creative, you could add some, if we go over to the spice cabinet as we go over here, you could add some curry powder to it. You could add one tablespoon of garam masala to it. You could add a tablespoon of tandoori masala. Dried apricots would be good, Kathy said. Chipotle, chipotle powder. Um, you can really have a lot of fun with this. And that's why I want to encourage you to, it's just, we're using a basic ratio, but then we're having fun is what we want. And we're getting a little bit of color on this just to get some of that Maillard reaction that happens over 300 Fahrenheit. Once it gets to over 300 Fahrenheit, you're gonna see some browning. The proteins, the sugars will brown. What are you laughing at? I keep walking away and you keep, so, and you keep and walking closer close. to me. Okay, so now we've got some fruits in there, dried fruits, and that, what that's going to do is add sweetness to it. So we're going to choose dill, 
But if you've got cilantro, use cilantro. If you've got basil, mm. use I some love basil. Dill. You do. I think it's because your heritage. It's my Swedish heritage. Swedish heritage. This but is all we had you know, growing up. In no Nordic, spices. In, in a Nordic cooking, they'll actually preserve a little spice. Really? It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, they'll preserve the salmon. So now we're going to take some of the dill. We're just rolling it over itself. Those um, lovely, delicate fronds as. Um, we're just going to roll them over each other and we're just going to chop this, the dill, just chopping it and mincing it. You can see I'm just mincing the dill. Mm, that smells good. It's lovely, isn't it? I do love dill. Did you say frongs? I like that word. Frongs, yes. I'm going to use that more. Every now and again I come up with a word. I really know, like frongs. For, for a lad from Liverpool, I just pull them out, <laughs> just pull them out of frong. <laughs> Some freshly milled pepper, please. Don't use the stuff pre-ground. If we're going to cook together, we're going to be friends. We don't buy ground pepper. We or gar uh, jarred garlic. No, we don't get jarred garlic. Okay, now, if you wanted to, you could feel free to add some garlic. Now, if you love garlic, feel free to add some of that to the pan. Remember, I say it every week, you're the Christopher Columbus of your taste buds. It's important you have fun. At this stage now, I'm going to bring the rice off. The rice is going to come off, and I'm just going to stick this in. I've got a colander in the sink, and I'm going to drain the rice. And the reason why we started to cook the rice is to make sure that the rice is cooked beforehand. We're using a long grain rice. If you've got short grain rice, you could use a borio or anything like that, yes? Uh, what do you think about using cardamom in it? I think cardamom's good. I'd say with cardamom, cardamom has a lot of fragrance. It's like one of those perfumes, you know, certain perfumes carry a lot of fragrance. I remember one of my aunties used to wear um, a little bit too much fragrance, you know. I, uh, you know um, and sometimes what happens with the too much fragrance, and I know we all travel a lot, uh, you always get that person that they're duty free who takes advantage of the fragrance, the free spray of fragrance, and then they come down the plane, and you're watching them, oh, my Joe. <laughs> <laughs> or they sit next you're to you. You're just hoping they don't they sit, sit next, next to you. <laughs> you end up with a migraine mm -hmm. by the time you get to Brisbane, Australia. Um, um, so, you know, cardamom is something that's wonderful. I'd say with this one, maybe half a teaspoon of cardamom, because it's so fragrant. Did you put the garlic in there? Uh, you can add garlic to it if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, Annabelle you, said that she thinks garlic should go in everything. Annabelle, well, thank you so much. I think you uh, you are spot on. Garlic is a wonderful way to add flavor without having a tremendous amount of calories. So we've got a small amount of pellet on the lamb and on the beef. Now, this recipe freezes as well. And I'll remind us towards the end how to reheat these. I'll tell you how to reheat that them. That must be hot. So you've got, you can see now oh, yeah. that we've got the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the lambs in there. It could be Italian sausage. It could be beef. You can be, you can go anywhere you want with this recipe. The most important thing for you is to feel that inspiration. Now this rice here, um, this rice, it's important to try to get the season to a place where you kind of are happy with it. We're using a feta cheese today, but you could be using cheddar cheese, you could be using, um, a, a, you know, a queso cheese, um, or you, all of you, you know, you don't want cheese, you don't have to have it, but we're using some feta. Now, I know that feta cheese and lamb get along so well. Feta cheese gets along like... Like us. Like, like me and you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so let's take the feta cheese out of um, Now, feta cheese, we know it's been in the brine, so we know it's going to be salty. So we want to be careful with our salt. I know this is going to need some pepper. So at this stage now, I'm just going to grab a spoon, Mrs. Steele. At this stage now, what I want to do is take a season, take a taste of this. Now, the rice isn't going to be fully cooked, so it's going to be a little bit nutty, but this is part of the sacrifice you have to do of being a chef. Take a small amount. So when we take a taste, it's just a small amount. Be careful. It, There's so much steam on that. Don't it, burn your mouth. It is in your dinner. Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely delightful. Could oh. you use goat cheese? Mm. Yeah. You could. The goat cheese, the goat cheese would be fine. Mm. Could you use some... Um, Parmesan, Pecorino Romano. What are you looking at now? Because <laughs> you're like, mm. it's, it's delightful. <laughs> it's absolutely delightful. 
Um, and feels like it needs more pepper. It really needs more pepper. Um, feel free if you like chilies to chop up some chilies in there, you know, but make sure that your audience likes chili as well. There's nothing worse than that. So the recipe when we design this, we say it calls, I'm just going to grab a spoon, apologies. Um, the recipe calls <coughs> for four peppers. Depending on the size of your peppers, it will easily do today six of these peppers. But I don't know, if you get the big fellas, it's not going to do that. So I'd rather, you know, you do it. And if you find that you've got stock mixture left over, just cook this out with a little bit of stock to make sure the rice is fully cooked. So now I'm happy with the seasonings. So I'm happy that the seasonings, uh, they taste good, the salt and the pepper's nice. And it's, it's quite nice, it's delicate. All spice in there would be absolutely delightful. So if I add some allspice, you know, so if I added allspice, I know that'll get along well with lamb. And it really it's, smells good. Yeah, it's, it's such a good recipe and they're really, they're a winner. They're a crowd pleaser, you know, and with the yogurt sauce, they work so well. So I'm just going to fill the peppers. And um, this is something you can make the night before, you know, you can prepare these, prep these the night before. Have your lovely day with the holidays with, you know, any members of your family, etc. And then we can just cook these. So let's take these out there with a little rascals. They're really pretty. Well, How I long did you par cook the rice? Uh, the rice cooked for about four minutes. And, um, you know, one of the things we do, we want to make sure, I've seen lots of recipes. So there's two techniques here that we're doing slightly different than what other people do. And that technique is with steaming. So for the first 30 minutes, we're actually steaming these. So the process of adding the foil to it causes a steaming with the stock. We want to make sure that everything's cooked because a lot of recipes, they'll, they'll have them dry. And perhaps I want to remind me to teach you about the, the tilty pepper. I want to talk about the pepper in a second because sometimes you get... Well, you Doug like, has a Panasonic automatic rice cooker and it's amazing and he doesn't work for the company. <laughs> he is cheeky. He is cheeky. I can't wait to meet Doug. I cannot wait until we're all back together. I know, I think we should definitely Doug, do a theme Doug Doug cooking cruise. Don't so wait until you meet with Charles. Charles has got a joke. You name a subject and somehow Charles can bring up a joke. You didn't it. put a lid on the rice to cook? Is that because it's basmati? Uh, yeah, we don't need to because it's not, you know, it's not, we're not fully cooking. We're just blanching. We're basically giving it a head start. Um, so as we look at these now, Mrs. Spielberg, as we look, we're just going to place, we don't have to do this, we're just going to place them on top, but it doesn't, it's not needed, I'll show you some without having the Look peppers. Look how pretty. And we will place these on, and I seem to be one How of long can we freeze before we should use? Um, I would actually cook them freeze, I like to cook and then freeze with peppers, um, so I like to cook them beforehand and then freeze. We can refrigerate these one to two days ahead of time, um, seems to be one and one missing. I don't know where you've gone, you <laughs> rascal. Um, Where'd so, it go? I, I, I haven't got a clue. Um, oh, sausages, I forgot to do this. So what we want to do is to make sure, uh, if you're making this vegetarian, you use a vegetable stock and you use mushrooms, pour some of that stock on the inside. And what this does, it ensures that that rice is gonna cook perfect. Mm. So pour some of the stock. And um, we always make chicken stock, just for the record. I, you know, I hope, I, what, as we, you know, travel across the world. Someone said um, it's in the sink. I wonder if it really is in the sink. Susan. Probably, probably Susan. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to pour some of the chicken stock down below. And what's going to happen is now, when we put a lid on this, it's going to cause a steaming process. So I'm just going to grab some foil. And what's going to happen now is... I was I was laughing because a lot of people had said that they've never like their moms never cooked real rice only minute rice and I would agree my mom I don't think my mom ever cooked real rice we only had minute rice I've never made a minute I know rice. it's yeah, hilarious yeah. Um, I remember when I first met Mrs Spielberg I'd never had canned soup you know it just it was a foreign thing to me um, so what happens now because we cover this with a foil it's causing a steaming process. There's a lot. Of, I'll, I'll go to you. Okay. There's a lot of um, moisture in the um, onion and in those mushrooms, and the saturated fat from the lamb is going to keep it nice and tender. But what we want to do for the first 30 minutes is to make sure. A lot of people will cook peppers in a dry heat. When you cook them with just a dry heat, not slice steaming them first, they always end up too crunchy. You have it, and you know you're there, and it's, you know it's a salad. 
You know, it's a salad bowl. Yeah. Is the Blue Pan um, Le Creuset the company you don't work for? Yes. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yes, it is Le Creuset. Um, it's their, their dishes. I, I, quite, I do like them, I have to say. It's a great dish. I use this a lot for my lasagnas, my casseroles, etc. Cover with this. We want to place this in the oven. We preheat the oven. As I told you before, we always want to preheat the oven at least 20 minutes beforehand. If you're baking 30 minutes beforehand, your thermometer in the oven, hot air, will set your thermometer to go ding, but your walls in your oven will not be ready. So you always want to make sure 30 minutes beforehand, whenever we bake, we're looking for oven springs or for a cake, we're looking for that brownness. So always trust me with that. And then you want to buy like a, just to make sure uh, your oven's at right temperature, buy one of those inexpensive thermometers. Alexa, stop. Okay. So when the pet, I'm going to pretend I'm just putting that in the oven. Okay. What we're going to do now is I want to quickly make the sauce. Alexa, stop. Has it been 30 minutes? Yeah. What happens, Mr. Spielberg? We did say we'd like to do a 40 minute show. You don't mind if I go over here. Please All right. <laughs> okay. uh, yogurt. Um, Greek yogurt's always a thicker yogurt. Um, regular yogurt's a bit too thin, I find, for sauces. Okay for desserts, but not when it's coming to savoury. Um, so we've got some Greek yogurt. Lime zest adds a beautiful flavour to it. So we're going to take some lime zest. We've washed the lime, and it adds such a bright flavour to food. So always use some. Whenever we're cutting the lime, when are we going to squeeze it? Roll it around on your countertop. If your husband's got, or your wife's got some nuts. That's just back, fun to watch. If she's got, what are you laughing at now? What, what are you laughing? Hmm? Ridiculous. What, what's, what, what's ridiculous? <laughs> Wow. That's the most exercise we've had in weeks. <laughs> bit of lime juice, a little bit of lime juice. You know, we've added acidity, and we always know what contrasts look. What? It's sweet, sour, sour, sweet. So we always want to con contrast. If something's too sour, we need a little bit of sweet. We want it to be a sweeter. What are you laughing at now? Oh God. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dried mint. So whenever we use his fresh mint, his dried mint, they use a lot of dried mint in Turkey, mm. uh, and I really like it. So whenever we're using dried spices, it's about a third less. Dried mint, it, it has tones that are totally different than what fresh mint has. We're gonna add some mint to it, and we talked about the combination of, when we think about the flavor. What's that, honey? Honey, I love honey with cooking. Um, I don't like to heat honey up too much, actually. When I'm cooking with it, sometimes we'll make um, mm, that. smells good too. Yeah. Fresh lime's awesome. Fresh lime's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So at this stage, with this, we last week we used some Aleppo pepper. So I thought if you've got it, we can use it. Aleppo pepper is that classic pepper, which is about 50% of the spice of a normal chili flake. It's from Syria, and then it went to Turkish and cooking, if you see it around. So we've got some Aleppo pepper, but feel free if you want to, to use a little bit of curry powder in there. So you can get creative with that. And then we know we're gonna add a little bit of salt, small amount of uh, mold and salt. And we bring this together, just mixing this around. And now we have this delightful yogurt sauce. And I use this as a dip with crudite. Um, feel free if you wanted also to use some smoked paprika in there. Um, I'll use this for crudite. If I'm making a, a lamb, um, like say for instance a lamb, shave some lamb leg, I've spiced it in a pita bread, I'll put some of this in there. So it's a great sauce. It's one to have in your arsenal. You know, it's always nice to have uh, a set re a set amount of sauce is what you have because when you cook a piece of protein or some vegetables roasted vegetables it comes out marvelous let me grab um i want to grab the uh grab the peppers out i've made some ahead of time and i made it with uh, some mushrooms this one so we've got some which i prepared earlier um i'm gonna bring this out actually on a wooden board i always try to just because Wooden board, we want to oil at least once a week. So whenever we've got a wooden board, we want to oil this at least once a week. And we use a plastic board. You know, you'll notice when I'm cooking, I try to use a plastic board for cutting meat, etc. Okay. So now we've got the peppers. When they come out, you can see they've got a nice color to them. I took the foil off, which was the same as what they did, and then I let them brown. 
these I prepared yesterday. Whenever we reheat peppers, it's always a good idea to have them on a, um, a, cook, a cooling rack, like a cookie rack, and, um, and, and then just a few heavy puff foil down below, some holes so they drain. More water content's gonna come out the second day of them. That's for reheating them after you've cooked them. So here we can see we've got this lovely pepper, and when it comes to serving the pepper, what I like to do with this one, and it's up to you at home, how you want to serve yours but I like to take some like marinara sauce um, I'll take some marinara sauce or we'll take some you know uh, take some marinara sauce because I think the tomato adds a great flavour to it and we'll take some of that sauce and then what we're going to do now Mrs Spielberg is and I, I keep on thinking about this sticky toffee pudding question what you've got for me as well yeah we'll take some of that yogurt sauce and you can see We've got some of that yogurt sauce, and we're just going to drizzle that around. And the contrast with the two of these, the yogurt sauce, and feel free if you wanted to, you know, some people like a little bit of spice, add some more alipo pepper to it. You know, you could add that. If you wanted a Typhoon, I think, is on. Typhoon from our Typhoon? I think so. Is it? He says, hi, Chef John Ashton. Glad oh. to see you're still using my recipe. Oh, I love Typhoon. He's amazing. With the, the last, we've had a little bit of olive oil on there to add a little bit of fruitiness. And we've got the salt on there. And then we're going to take one of those big fella peppers. Let's just grab a red one. Hey, let's grab a yellow one while we're here. Bring him across. And now we've got the stuffed pepper. So if we take a look inside, we can see it's tender. It's nice. Let's get close in. Get, get close in. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll grab a fork because everybody loves to take a look. Um, we'll take a look inside. And the rice will be perfectly, because we actually cook these ahead of time, you can see the steams coming out. You can see that the rice is cooked. The feta cheese is slightly melted. So we've got that yogurt sauce. Now this one's just made with mush mushrooms. We didn't have the lamb on this one. So we, as we look at this, we're going to come through the yogurt into that tomato sauce and feel free to add some smoked paprika to that tomato sauce as well. And just look at the steam on that. It's perfectly cooked. We're going to have that saltiness from the cheese. You look happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm really happy. It's, a, it's truly, what a gift. Just the saltiness of the feta cheese and the lime from that yogurt just brightens it all up. Absolutely delightful. What's your question about sticky toffee pudding? Yeah, if you don't mind, the person who had asked the question about the sticky toffee pudding for Thanksgiving, if you repost it, I can read it. Yes, yeah, um, that is a great recipe. Serve this, I just want to quickly, why are we waiting for that comment? Cheryl's making the uh, lasagna bolognese. Oh, well done. So and, uh, yep. Here's a quick sauce while we're waiting for um, the sticky toffee pudding. Mayonnaise, just a regular mayonnaise. Yep. Small amounts of honey in there. Some cumin seed. So we're taking some cumin seed and we've just put them on the mortar and pestle. And then we're going to add a little bit of um, little bit of lemon juice to it. I just want to show you one other quick sauce while we're at it as well. Um, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there. And then we're going to add some freshly milled pepper. Now this was just lemon juice. And lemon, I just want to clarify that, lamb and cumin get along so well. And this makes another quick sauce, honey, mayonnaise, and some cumin seed and some lemon. And feel free, um, I know Annabelle said she loves to have garlic, didn't she? Feel free if you wanted to, you could add some garlic to that as well. Um, let's just try this, I want to try this because one of our guests kindly said about the peeling of the garlic. So I'm gonna chop it in half and see if the skin comes off easier. John yeah. looks ecstatic when he tastes the food. Yeah. It's real. Oh, well done. Yeah, oh, very it's, nice. It's soft on the skin. And with that garlic, we just had, because when we think about aioli, we'll think about lemon and a little bit of garlic. A new tip. And there we Live. Go. Happy days. Okay. That's, there, that's a beautiful aioli. And that's a cumin aioli that will get along so well with roasted vegetables. Also get along with this dish. You've got another sauce you can add. Just cumin seeds, and we've just basically chopped them up, and they're just wonderful in the palate. Salt, pepper, honey. How much honey? How's it taste to you? You remember, sweet, sour, yep. balance. You cooked that. Um, okay, next week. What are we this? making? 
we're coming up to a holiday that we have in the United States called Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the holidays, we think about this uh, roasted protein and we think about uh, a plethora of side dishes, lots of vegetables. Um, you know, if you've ever been to Waterside on, um, on our Crystal on Serenity or Sympathy, you may have had our Pom's puree, our beautifully creamed potatoes. Creamed? Creamed, yes, I'm going <laughs> to use the R, creamed. They're so creamed, so beautiful. So next week I want to show you how to make Pom's puree, which is mashed potato, but what's the secret to making them very good? And then I also want to show you how to make a wonderful herbed roast potatoes. Roast potatoes is a technique Two different types of potatoes, one's got a high starch, one's got a medium starch, two different processes. We're going to be using a little bit of baking or baking soda or bicarbonated soda to change the pectin, to change the water pH. Um, if you are going to be cooking these, as you get ready for the holidays, I would recommend a potato ricer or a food, one of these food mills. So, um, and once I show you how to make these potatoes, a complete and utter game changer. Also, order some white pepper if you would. I know we use black pepper a lot, but order some white pepper. You will never look back. Once you learn these two potatoes, it will change the way everyone who comes to your home will say, this is the best potato I've ever had in my life. Anything else, Mrs. Spielberg? We're good. If you love this show today, please share it on your social media. We want to make cooking more positive. We're getting closer and closer to being back on the ocean. It was wonderful to see that they're going to get the vaccine. I can't wait to see you all. Charles and Margaret, thank you so much for getting up so early in Australia to watch the show. Doug, thank you for being a cheeky monkey. <laughs> and thank you. We have so many loyal followers that tune in every single week, and we really mean this from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it. We love the pictures. We love the comments. And we love all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining in every Sunday, and we'll see you next week. Cheerio for now. Cheers. See you later. Bye.